how do I find the value in who I am without tying my worth to my job and what I do? Mm. Oh, that's another idea that's been we've been playing with. I I think it's the idea of worth. I mean, it seems like it's at the bottom of almost every coaching session. I don't know about you, Roger. Like, do you feel? Yeah. I mean, am I worthy? It seems to be a, a universal question. I don't know. I, I feel like we as a family have been playing with this idea that like when someone does something like incorrect or not, you know, not thoughtful, like, you know, to, to call them out in real time, like your, your worth is not attached to this. Um, we've been doing that for maybe, you know, it's been a while now. We've been playing with that idea. It's interesting when you catch yourself, I'm like, I'm finding like when I catch myself in that too, like, oh, I miss putting out the reverse, like, miss putting out the recycling, to, you know, mm -hmm. this morning. Like, oh, my worth is not tied to that. Again, I feel like these things are a lot like, uh, like the affirmations. I feel like they, they, there's something that needs to be repeated over and over again. Like an example that sticks out in my mind, and I've shared this many times, I think, is uh, there was something going on where I was feeling like something business-wise. I forget what, exactly what it was, uh, but I remember uh, I was going out in the backyard and I wanted to make a new garden bed. And... I mean, I grew up in Southwest Pennsylvania. Like, I worked on farms, like, in the summertime, like, you know, digging ditches in Pennsylvania is not very fun. You hit rocks all the time and whatever. So here I am in Oregon doing the same thing. And I remember there with a shovel. And every time I stuck the shovel in the earth and would turn it over, I found myself having to repeat again, like, the idea like you know you can do this or you know you got this or you know stay in gratitude or i forget whatever the mantra was but it was almost like my mind and whole being wanted to go back into that hard place and i had to say it again and again and again and it was so therapeutic to have like the 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 action of just turning over the earth like let's say it again oh turning over the earth oh that that's coming as like this wild ping pong match and I feel like that's sometimes what we have to do in order to allow our subconscious or the lizard mind or limbic brain or whatever you want to call it, like to allow that part of our brain that's always operating, always judging, is judging ourselves harshly almost all the time, like to love that part of us because it keeps us safe. It's like it's a necessary part of what we're doing. It needs to be treated with love too. And the only way I know how to treat it with love is just by like just giving it a hug again and again, saying it's okay. Like, But that... That image of, you know, creating a new garden bed really sticks with me. Yeah. I'm curious for yourself, Raj, like what, what structures are, I'm kind of curious your response to that question too. I think when you talked about being, that really helped. And um, an affirmation I actually created for myself with my coach a while back was, I deserve to be loved for who I am, not just for what I do. So have that on a sticky note as a reminder, you know, and some of this is tied up between, you know, kind of values and how I was brought up and expectations. And I was listening to a video recently where someone was talking about identity and how much of our identity can be tied up in almost being a workaholic or being exhausted, you know, and if I'm not overly exhausted, does that mean that I haven't worked hard enough? Or, you know, am I being lazy? So those are lots of things I've had to work through. And what I love to, to do on the program, so I, I run a lot of women in leadership programs, and we look at what does, who am I as a leader? You know, who do I need to be versus what do I need to do? And a while back, I started to create a being list versus a doing list. And that's helped me immensely because when I look at the being list and, you know, being empathetic, being calm, being courageous, being authentic. And I thought, let me look at those words. Actually, that's what I want to be in every environment, not just as a coach. 
Mm. or as a trainer or as a consultant therefore if that's who i am then i can be free because that's not just tied to doing the coaching or doing the profession am i making sense right Right. i tried making a being list i have tried to make them i'm i'm never i'm in awe of people who make them work I feel like there's magic in that, but yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> That's rad. What stood out to you, Johnny, what I just shared there? Uh, the idea that, um, the idea of being able to create and maintain a being list. I feel like that's, uh, I feel like it, it's, it ha- like uh, it feels like it has to be like a lot of trust in the process. Like you trust yourself in a deep way. That's cool. Yeah. And, and for me, self-trust is connected to that self-worth. And it's, it's actually being able to love myself through the dark side as well as the light. Because I'm not, I want to be calm. I'm not always calm. <laughs> I'm not always patient. And there are times when I'm judgy. So how can I love that part of me and have grace whilst wanting to be in a place of being different? 